If you are new to Adobe Lightroom and you've been wondering why your photos somehow change the way they look once you import them into Lightroom, or if you're just looking to understand the different Lightroom previews in general and when to use which, then this video is for you. So if we want to understand what's happening when we import images into Lightroom and why they sometimes change, we first of all have to understand how image processing in general works. The reason this happens when you're shooting raw is due to the nature of a raw file. You gotta understand that a raw file is not, well, in layman's terms, is not an actual image file. A raw file is just a file that contains information about brightness values and color values, and what it needs is some form of raw converter software to make sense of all that information and turn it into an actual visible image. So whenever you're viewing an image, you are not actually looking at a raw file anymore, you're always looking at some form of conversion of that raw file. So even when you're out taking photos, the preview that you see in your viewfinder or on the back of your screen is an already converted raw image, meaning that the camera is converting all the raw image data into an actual viewable image. And that viewable preview actually gets baked into the raw file. So whenever you're transferring that raw file to, let's say, your computer where you're editing, that preview also gets transferred and is actually used for several different viewing purposes. So what is happening whenever we import our raw files into Lightroom? Like I said, a raw file always needs to be converted to be viewed as an actual image and different softwares have different ways of interpreting the data that's stored in the raw file. And that also includes your camera. So while your camera might have a certain way of interpreting the green or the brightness values in your raw file, raw converter software like Lightroom or Photoshop's Camera Raw might have a different way of interpreting what information the raw file is giving them. So now that we have a general understanding of how raw files actually work, let's head into Lightroom and look at all the types of different previews how they work, when to use which, and how we can maybe work around my image looking way different in Lightroom than on my camera when I was shooting the image. So I've got a few images here that will work really well for explanation purposes. I shot those during a trip to Norway together with Audi and somehow the dynamic range optimization feature on my Sony turned itself on. Well, I probably just messed up pressing buttons and I turned it on myself but it was on and I was not aware of it. So what happened was the previews on the back of my camera looked way brighter than the raw files actually were because the camera was already applying the dynamic range optimization to the preview files. But later on, the dynamic range optimization would not be applied to the raw files because it does not work for raw files. It only works for JPEGs or in that case, preview image files. So if we go in and actually take a closer look at those images, they do look quite nice when it comes to color, dynamic range and all that good stuff. That is because the images that Lightroom is showing us currently upon importing are actually the baked in preview files that we've talked about. Because Lightroom has not yet imported these images. Lightroom is just showing us what we have on our hard drive. And that is what I was talking about earlier when I said that the embedded previews are used for different viewing purposes. And this is one of them. So right now we are seeing exactly what we were seeing on the back of our camera. We are seeing basically in my case, the native Sony image preview. Now if we actually import those files and notice how Lightroom is currently set to build standard previews, as we hit import in the top left corner you are going to see that it says building standard previews. And while that is happening you are also going to notice that some of the images are drastically changing upon importing. They are getting way way darker. Now the reason that is happening is that Lightroom is now generating its own previews, basically using its own formula to interpret the data from the raw files. So the actual change that is happening is Lightroom switching from showing us the embedded preview, the baked in preview of the image, 
to actually showing us how Lightroom is now interpreting the image. The preview from the camera and the Lightroom preview are basically built for two different purposes. The preview on your camera is made for quick viewing purposes out in the field. It is supposed to give you an image with good contrast and color. Now the preview in Lightroom is supposed to give you the most accurate representation of what raw image data you actually captured. It is not supposed to be good looking right from the get-go because a raw file is actually made to capture and store as much image information as possible to give you the most amount of room to work with during post-production. So this is not supposed to be a file that's good looking from the get-go. It's more like a file that says here, this is your base, this is what it looks like. Now you have to put in the work to get this to a point where it actually looks good or where it actually looks the way you want it to look. So since we now understand why our images change when we import them into Lightroom, let's have a look at the different options for previews that we get. If you open up the Build Previews menu, the first option that you're going to see is Minimal. Now, minimal previews are just what the name states. They are minimal previews, meaning they are very low or minimal in size, but therefore they are also very low in quality. The benefit of that is that you can generate these previews very, very fast. So whenever you're importing hundreds or even thousands of photos into Lightroom at a time, these previews are not going to take Lightroom ages to generate and are basically meant to be used for simple viewing purposes. So whenever your first step after importing is just to go through a large number of images and sorting them and putting them into like closer collections, this is the preview you want to go with. Now the drawback to the minimal previews being pretty small in size is that you are not going to be able to fully zoom into them while you're viewing images in the library tab. You will be able to perform 100% zoom, but then again, since those preview files are not very large, they are not the most accurate representation of the actual resolution and detail in the image. So whenever you're dependent to viewing large amounts of detail to make your selections while going through your images, minimal previews are not the way to go. Another thing to notice is that whenever you're going to switch from the library module to the develop module to start editing, it is going to take Lightroom a split second to actually generate a larger preview that you can edit with. Our second option for building previews is embedded and sidecar. And if we hit import with this option selected, notice how in the top left corner, it now said fetching initial previews and not building previews. And if you take a closer look at the images, these do look awfully close to the previews we were getting in the import window. And that is because with embedded and sidecar, Lightroom is actually using the baked in previews from our raw files, which means that Lightroom is not generating the previews itself, but showing us the previews the camera built. So if you are looking for an option where your images do not change upon importing them into Lightroom or where they look more like what you were seeing on the back of your camera, this is the option for you. Now you might think, what do I need the other preview options for? If I can just use this option, which is super fast to generate, and it looks exactly like it looked when I shot the image. Images. Now here's the drawback to using the embedded and sidecar option. Since these previews are built in your camera and are mainly meant to be viewed on a tiny LCD screen or for very simple viewing purposes, for example when you import your raw images onto your computer, these are very very small in size. In fact, these are even smaller than the minimal previews. What this means is that you do not have any option to zoom into these images while you're viewing them and making selections. Actually, when you're trying to zoom into them, you are going to notice that the 100% zoom actually makes the image smaller because what you're seeing right now is the actual size of the preview file. So the regular view, in my case on my screen, that Lightroom gives me is already an enlarged version of the preview file. So this means that they are obviously also going to be quite low in resolution, but if you're just using them 
to again go through your images and make selections or sort your images these are going to be good enough just if you need something that is able to show you a lot more detail or be a more accurate representation of all the information resolution and detail from your raw file this is probably not going to be the best option to go with now there is an additional step to the workflow with the embedded and sidecar that can be used and that is that if you were going to make your first selections based of the overall appearance of the images and not like pixel peeping and all that stuff and you narrow it down to a closer selection and now you want to see more details for some of the images Lightroom is going to show you a little button that says embedded preview which means that this was an embedded preview from a raw file and if you click that button Lightroom is then going to generate a standard preview for you so you can then zoom in view details and all that good stuff but from that point on you are going to be left with a Lightroom preview again so the image is not anymore going to look like the preview file that you saw before also just like with the minimal previews whenever you're switching from the library module to the develop module it is again going to take Lightroom a small amount of time to then generate a preview that you can actually edit with and just like with the option with the embedded preview button this preview is then going to be a Lightroom preview so it's going to look like the Lightroom previews and not have the look of the embedded preview any longer so in the end you are again going to be left with an image that has the sort of Lightroom preview look to it you will never be able to edit off of the embedded preview or an image that looks just like the embedded preview however this is a way where you can at least sort your images with a preview that looks just like what you saw on camera and then start your editing workflow from there now the third option for building previews is the standard preview just how the name states this is basically your gold standard middle ground type of preview the standard preview is a lot larger in size and resolution than the minimal and the sidecar preview meaning that this is also going to take lightroom quite a bit longer to generate but in most cases this is not really to be a significant difference unless you're really importing hundreds or thousands of images now even though these previews do take longer to generate for a lot of use cases the added amount of time is probably going to be worthwhile just because of the higher image quality of the previews which for example lets you crop in just as much as you like another benefit of the standard preview is that if you go to the lightroom classic menu and then to your catalog settings and you navigate to the file handling tab you can actually choose how large you want your standard preview to be so if you for example are editing on an older machine that is taking way too long to generate these standard previews and you might just need a preview that is a little bit larger than the minimal or the sidecar preview you could set this option to 1024 or 144 for example and then have a smaller standard preview that is generated more quickly than a large standard preview and will still have a significant better quality than for example the minimal preview now the last option that we have for preview files is the one-to-one -one preview and as I hit import you are instantly going to notice that it is taking Lightroom quite a bit to build these even if I just import seven images this is because the one-to-one -one preview is the actual size of your photos so whatever resolution you were shooting on your camera the one-to-one -one preview is going to be that resolution meaning that those preview files are going to be pretty big and fine size but logically therefore they are also going to be the best image size possible they are going to be an actual representation of the resolution your image has meaning that if you were shooting something that while viewing your images you are going to be dependent on looking at small little details or being able to see exactly what your photos look like when it comes to image quality then these are the previews that you want to go with now if you just want to use them for viewing purposes looking at each photo for maybe five to ten seconds without cropping and then deciding if you're going to keep it or if it's going to go into a closer selection you are not going to make use of the edit image quality 
quality from the one-to-one -one preview. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is smart previews, because I do think that they are a bit confusing for quite a lot of people, especially because it's an optional box that you can tick after you decided what kind of previews you want to generate. And build smart previews kind of sounds like you're going to build different previews then. So why was I selecting what kind of preview to build in the first place if I now decided that I want to create a smart preview? And since it's called smart, it sounds like it's something that we should be clicking. But what are those previews actually? So if we import images and we check the create smart previews option, you are going to see that upon importing and generating previews, Lightroom is going to give you this little prop-up that says smart previews were built or already exist for seven photos, which basically just means that Lightroom built smart previews for our images. Now, if you look at the images, they do not look any different than if we just created standard previews. Why is that? The way smart previews work is that Lightroom is going to build a separate preview file that is going to be stored locally on your computer that can be used to edit while the original image file is not on your computer. So let's say that you are editing from an external SSD, which is not an uncommon thing. And you are going to go on a trip and you are going to take your laptop with you, but you do not want to take your external hard drive with you because it's clunky, whatever. You just don't want to bother taking it. The smart preview now lets you edit your image from a preview that is fairly good in quality while the hard drive is not connected to your machine, meaning the original image file is not there to be edited. You can then edit the smart preview and all the changes that you apply to the smart preview are going to be stored by Lightroom and whenever you plug your external hard drive back into your computer, Lightroom is then going to apply the edits you made to the original image file which then can be exported just how you usually would. Now there is another use case where using smart previews to edit can indeed be pretty smart. And that is when the computer that you're forced to edit on is rather on the slower side of things. Since smart previews are a lot smaller in file size than your typical raw file, and since they are generated by Lightroom, meaning that they are basically optimized to work for Lightroom editing, actually taking the time upon importing to generate smart previews and then just edit off of those smart previews can significantly speed up your workflow if you have to edit on a fairly slow computer. So your workflow then would be to import all your images and let Lightroom or your computer take its time to generate smart previews. And then once you're done editing, you are just going to use the raw files to export the final images. So there you have it. This is everything that you need to know about previews and Lightroom and why your images magically change upon importing. I hope this helps and see you in the next video.